Hi everyone, welcome back. We are in the garden again for another harvest. So one of the first things we harvest from our garden after our garlic or before our garlic, just depending on the year, is our cabbage. Now, my cabbage right along this fence is really close to my chickens. So this year, my chickens have just been attacking my cabbage, which it is what it is. We should have put some chicken fencing up, but we just haven't gotten to it. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you just move on, right? So last year we had just the most amazing cabbage harvest, the best cabbage harvest yet. Like it was wonderful. I planted the cabbage in a, the similar area here, maybe in a little bit from the garden. The chickens didn't bother it last year, but I did so well, so much so that I debated on not planting cabbage this year, but I am glad I did because now that it's summer, we're eating a lot of our sauerkraut and we're down to our last three bags of sauerkraut. So I'm gonna use a cabbage that we're harvesting today to make some sauerkraut. Now I still do have a lot of cabbage from last year as well in the freezer, so I won't be freezing any of it. I think I have enough that I can get myself through the year if I need to. I tend to use cabbage a lot in place of celery, or I have been because I haven't had a lot of celery to work with. So unfortunately a lot of my cabbage plants look like this, where this is the head. And it doesn't look like we're going to get much of anything because the chickens have just decimated it. So thankfully, I don't consider it much lost. It does help when you plant the seeds yourself because the seeds are so affordable that when you're planting them and you lose them, it's not such a big deal. And still all these other leaves, we're going to go to my garbage disposals over there, my pigs. And it doesn't feel so wasteful. I think if I had spent $3 or something on each of these plants, I would be struggling with it a little bit more. So I am just using a pocket knife and I like to cut down at the bottom of my cabbage so it looks kind of like it would when you'd get it from the store. Now I did see some cabbage moths on here, but honestly, I really don't see too much her cabbage worms. There's a little bit. But I think they were just really just starting, so I love doing cabbage early in the season like this because you can avoid a lot of that. But that's a pretty decent sized head, I guess, <laughs> compared to the last one. Those were my only cabbage that were the early Jersey Wakefield because there was a stick here. Now those are the ones last year that did so well. This is what you want to see. Do you have a little bit of bug damage on here? this nice tight head and then I know it's ready to pick. So this is the one I've been basing. I'm gonna start my sauerkraut on or not. This purple round Dutch variety, the plants are really beautiful and there's not very much bug damage on them, but the heads are growing really slow. So I pulled one that was just getting attacked by chickens and you could tell it wasn't gonna make it. But I've got two here that look really nice. And then we've got this really big round Dutch. Look at that. That's what you want it to look like. Maybe not so many bug holes. That's okay. We can peel that off. <laughs> there you go, guys. <laughs> so I'd be curious to try some other varieties if you guys have any recommendations because like the head on this cabbage is not very tight. Um, so bugs are going to get in there and stuff and it's just a pain to clean. So something that forms a really nice tight head. I don't know why the one Dutch one did and this is the same variety didn't, but if you have any recommendations for my zone 4B Minnesota, I would be happy to take them. Um, the early Jersey Wakefield is what grew great for me last year, so could just depend on, you know, year by year, day by day. All right, so I'm done harvesting. Just got this little bag, not too much. Nothing compared to last spring, but we've got these open spots here. So what I will probably do is put beans in here now, since they didn't all come up in the first place or chickens got them, I already put some beans in here, so that might be kind of a pain because when these beans are done, the other beans will still be going kind of thing. But then, like, look at this. Chicken. Darn chickens. I just pulled that one out. All right. I have to work harder to get in there. <laughs> So in the past we've had our chickens free ranging in the yard. I do think that free ranging is probably best for the chickens. But 
just because we have so many onion beds and things planted, we decided not to do that this summer. And we've had the chickens kind of in this open area for now. We'll probably switch it up a little bit. We have a portable net here so we can move it a little bit as needed, but it has been really nice. Um, I came out and sat in the yard and played with the kids and didn't have to worry about chicken poop everywhere. So it is nice having them contained, but then there's things like this where I'm like, that's why they're picking so hard on this stuff. Um, but anyways, I did end up leaving some of the purple Dutch. I would love to do purple sauerkraut. I have never done it. I think that would be really fun. Um, they do seem the most bug resistant. There's hardly any biting on there. There's two decent sized plants and then one tiny itty bitty plant. And then under the sunflower, there's another um, of the green Dutch, um, but the green one that looks pretty good and it's shaded. So it seems to be coming in a little bit slower. So we will just wait and see. Probably in the next couple weeks, we'll have something from them. Wake. Hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright I forget my bowl weighs 447 grams but we are going to zero that out and we're gonna weigh our cabbage now that it's all shredded I did weigh it first and I was like no I'm not gonna do that because you always lose some along the way so we're gonna put it in the bigger bowl so I have more room to work with all right so I'm glad I reweighed it because it's a little bit less we're at 1376, make sure that that stayed. 1377, let's clean up my hands a little more. 1377, so 1377 grams of cabbage. Not really a lot, especially last year. I just had that great big cabbage harvest. I think my first batch of sauerkraut was 19 decent sized cabbage heads. Huge difference. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my calculator and figure out 2% of 1,377, which is 27.54. So let's double check that's right. 27.54. So I'm zeroing out my scale. Food scale is one of those things I didn't know how much I would use it. So I'm using canning pickling salts 
You can use any salt you like. The other salts ha can have impurities and just different discolorations and things when I have my sauerkraut, which I want it to look beautiful, so I'm not going to have that. So we're going to, whoops, my timer zeroed out here. All right, so we're going to add 27.54 grams of salt. So I added the salt, but be careful because I added way more than I needed. It was coming out so fast. So we ended up around 28 grams of salt, and I'm just going to mix this in my cabbage. Now, I am going to leave the salt here in my cabbage until it starts to weep, which it just looks like it's crying. I'll show you in a minute or two what it's looking like. But for now, let's just mix it in. All right, so to show you what it's like when it's weeping, it just kind of cries. <laughs> you can tell it's ready. Now, I wait till this stage so I don't have to add any water or anything to my kraut that would dilute it and take away that great flavor. We're gonna try to fill up this half gallon jar. I don't know if it's all going to fit, but we'll see. Might be too little or too much. Well, I really hope it is the perfect amount. We got enough to fill the jar at least. All right, so since I'm fermenting, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can just simply put on a loose lid and you can burp this every day, nothing extra to buy. Or you can buy pickle pipes. Now, I have these ones were just a cheap set I think I got off of Amazon a couple years ago. And they have this top, you fill some, you put some water in here, you put this on and then um, basically the air goes out but it doesn't come back in. Now, I don't really like these because these have to be replaced because even though there's silicone in here, they do get rusty. Now, a few years back, I bought this Mason Tops set and this has just been my favorite for fermenting. But really, you could probably use any version of this. I just happen to like this one and use all the pieces of it. And I like that I can store the things right back in the box when I'm done with it. So, the first thing it has that I like to use is the packer. So I'm gonna use this to get all of the cabbage down under the liquid. Now again, I didn't add any liquid, so this is just the water from the cabbage and the salt pulling it out of there. And then I just push it down. Oh my goodness, Ooh, I wish we had more cabbage. Okay, this is way not enough in my opinion. Now, I should have saved, I'm really bummed about this, okay. I should probably move these to smaller jars. In the interest of time, I'm not going to, which means I might have to figure that out more later. But I do usually try to save some big cabbage leaves and put them on top. And of course I forgot and they're all chopped up at this point. So nothing I can do about it now. And then I will put a weight on top. And this kit comes with some glass weights, four of them. So the reason I don't want it this low is my glass weight doesn't actually cover this I need it up here more so I'm super bummed I didn't have enough cabbage for that but it is what it is this is what I've got um, so this means that any cabbage coming up it's going to be a problem again cabbage leaf would help with this because I could wrap it around the top and then I'm going to put a pickle pipe on top now these pickle pipes are just silicone and they're super handy because you just use any ring that you have wide mouth ring and you put these on top and slide it on there and then I'm just going to let this sit now you want it you want to let it sit for as long as you want it to ferment so you're welcome to taste it I really try not to taste it for a while because I don't like to mess with this stuff I have a feeling since it's not so full in my jar I am going to have some problems with the top though so the ideal place to put this is 60 to 75 degrees and out of direct sunlight and then we're gonna keep it there probably one to six weeks. Now I always keep mine there for sure a few weeks, probably around four, maybe up to that six mark. But I'm going to put it in a dish because along with whatever's escaping out of here, we might get some liquid nasties and I don't want them all over. So we're gonna put it in a dish and um, hopefully in a future video, I can show you what it's looking like. But I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're making sauerkraut, I'd love to know. I'm glad you got to see me again, bye.